Earlier in the class, I introduced you to some concepts like conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And I said that later on in the course, we would see where those conservation laws are coming from. Uh, so now we finally get to see where those conservation laws come from using the Lagrangian. And so this is called Noether's theorem. And so this was discovered by Emmy Noether, who was a famous female physicist. Uh, so it's good to point out when uh, people other than old white men have uh, made important contributions to physics and sciences in general. So Noether's theorem uh, basically states that for a Lagrangian, if you can take the derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to some variable, if the Lagrangian, if that derivative is zero, then the Lagrangian doesn't depend on that variable, obviously, and a quantity can be conserved. So what does that mean in practice? So let's do some examples. Uh, so let's say we have a mass m moving at some velocity v. If I want to write down the Lagrangian for this, Lagrangian is t minus v. So the kinetic energy is 1 half mx dot squared. And there's no potential, let's just say it's moving on a flat surface. Um, there's no potential energies. Okay, so let's take the, so this was our Lagrangian, one half and x dot squared. Let's take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to time. one half mx dot squared. So this is, so the mass, let's say in this example, the mass is constant and one half is obviously a constant. So we're take, this is a total time derivative, uh, not a partial derivative. So we have to be careful when we take our derivative. So the one half m is a constant, goes out in front. The derivative of x dot would be two x. And then we have to do chain rule, uh, the time derivative of x dot. Okay, so the one half and the two go away. And so we get m x dot times x double dot. And this is the time derivative of the Lagrange. Now, from our prior knowledge of Newtonian mechanics, if we have a mass that's moving at some velocity v and there's no potential energies, means there's no forces acting on that object. And if there's no forces acting on that object, it means that there's no acceleration. So x double dot is zero. Okay, so if you plug x double dot or acceleration, so if you plug that in, you get the time derivative of the Lagrangian is zero. Okay, that might not seem terribly interesting, uh, but 
because we've just taken a derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to time, we know that the Lagrangian is invariant with time uh, time translation. And because the Lagrangian is invariant in time translation, there is a conserved quantity associated with this. And when you have a conserved quantity with respect to the, when taking a total derivative with respect to time, uh, this is energy conservation. And we'll see another example of this in a second. So another um, thing that we can look at with this system is let's look at the Euler-Lagrange equations for just a moving ball. So the Euler-Lagrange equations say that your total time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity has to equal the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to position. So our Lagrangian was 1 half mx dot squared. So if we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, we get mx dot equals, and now the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x is just zero. So if we remember that, uh, so now we have a derivative of some term equals zero. So that means that this term has to be conserved. And mx dot is mass times velocity, which is just your momentum. So by taking the time derivative of the Lagrangian, we saw that there, the Lagrangian is invariant under time transformation, and that leads to a conserved quantity, and that conserved quantity happens to be energy. Then when we looked at the Euler-Lagrange equation, uh, we saw another quantity that uh, doesn't when you take the time derivative of it, uh, you get zero. And so that led to another conserved quantity and that uh, quantity we define as momentum. Okay, so you might be think thinking to yourself, well, that was a very simple system. So let's see how it works for something a bit more complicated. So let's look at a mass falling at some velocity V from some height h. So now we know that Rangian is kinetic energy minus potential energy. The kinetic energy here is in the y direction, so 1 half m y dot squared minus m g h, or m g y, we can call it. Okay, so now we have something um, that has only y and y dot, uh, a Lagrangian that only depends on velocity and position. So again, if we wanted to take a derivative with respect to time of this Lagrangian, we could do that, but maybe First, let's look at um, 
the Euler-Lagrange equation on this. So the Euler-Lagrange equation, uh, which we just saw, looks like this. Okay, so the time derivative of, so the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to y dot is m y dot d partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to y is negative mg. Then the time derivative of y dot is y double dot. The masses cancel and you're just left with y double dot equals negative g. Okay. Now let's do that time derivative of the Lagrangian to see if energy is still conserved. So that's the time derivative of one half m y dot minus m g y. Okay. Oh, m y dot squared. So you get one half m y dot times two times d by dt of y dot from the chain rule minus m g y dot. So this is two. So the two and the one half cancel. So you get m y dot times the time derivative of y dot is y double dot minus m g y dot. So factor out the, the m y dot. You get y double dot minus g. So if we plug in that y double dot is the acceleration due to gravity, which we saw earlier, then you just get that this interior term goes to zero. And so this Lagrangian, uh, the time derivative of this Lagrangian goes to zero. And so again, we've seen that now energy is conserved. And so we knew that energy was conserved already. Um, or we, I told you that energy was conserved, uh, but now we have some kind of theoretical framework to show that uh, those things that I told you were conserved quantities are actually conserved quantities. Uh, so a bit later in the course, when we talk about uh, rotating systems, I can show you that something like angular momentum is conserved. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.